Before we move on to the very last speaker of the evening, just a reminder that if you would like to ask any of the speakers this evening questions about their talks, we have the QR codes on the sides of the walls when we do our panel session. And last, as well as on the, the program slips, yes. And last, but certainly not least, our final speaker of the PACX event. And where do I start? Our last speaker is Joe. It's, it's <laughs> it is Joseph Labrador third year bioengineering major. He, he was performance coordinator of Barcada last year, co-president of Barcada this year. He is an Asia mentor, very involved in the PAC community. He is a content creator for Spoon University. <laughs> and, and he's my dad. So <laughs> it's pretty appropriate that the title of Joe's talk is Finding Family. So give a round of applause for Joseph. That is the dictionary definition of family. And I'm sure most, if not all of us here, would say yes. In the most literal sense, we have a family. But family can be a lot more than just a structure of a group of people. Um, it can be an emotion. It can be something you feel. Um, family is not just the group of people, but also the feelings and experiences tied to that group of people. So how do we define family in that sense? Each of our individual experiences is unique, um, so the way I define family will be different from how you define family, and that will be different from how the person sitting next to you defines family. Um, it varies from person to person, and it also changes over time. I'm 20 years old, um, and if you asked me how I would define family 10 years ago, my answer then would be very different than what it is today. Growing up, my experience with family was far from perfect. I have a mom, I have a dad, I have an older brother. So yes, again, in the most literal sense, I have a family. Probably the most stereotypical structure of a family that you'll ever think of. Um, but at home, for most of my life, I did lack that emotional aspect of family. My brother left for college before I was 10 years old, and he never really came home after that. And both of our relationships with our parents was very rocky, to say the least. And I think because of that, um, past me would actually not be able to define family, um, past the dictionary definition. Um, I cannot really say, or at least 10 year old me cannot say, family is. Um, when I looked around the world um, and looked at the people around me, I kind of developed this um, image of what family should be. Um, I would look at how my peers, interacted with their parents when they picked them up from school, came to the after school events. Um, I would look at how my friends interacted with their parents when I went over to hang out at their house. Um, even in the classroom, my teachers would talk about their family, especially their kids. And even in the media I consumed as a kid, I had a lot of bits and pieces, um, lots, of, lots of images of what I thought family should be. And then I look at my own home, and I look at my own family, and a lot of the times, um, a lot of the images that stick with me to this day, when I look back at my childhood, are those moments when I would look at my family and say to myself, this is what family should not be. There's always this idea that family is there for you no matter what. Family will love you no matter what. But for me, in the moments I failed, whether that be on a test, um, in a race, um, in a performance, and in any moment where I strayed a little too far from the image of what my parents wanted me to be, 
that love disappear. Um, and in a place where they say there's unconditional love, the love became very much conditional. And that goes both ways. Because for me, it's very hard to love the people who hurt you the most. And this broken love was something that was hard to deal with for most of my life, um, and sometimes it's still hard to deal with. Um, not because I was missing some ideal sense of love that I wanted, that I saw in other families, but a lot because there was a lot of guilt that came with not being able to truly say I love you to my parents. And especially when I think about the stuff that my parents gave me. Um, my parents are first generation immigrants, um, and I've met a lot of people back home, a lot of people here especially, and there's this shared experience, there's a lot of trends among us who grow up with parents who immigrated here. Um, our parents are hard on us, um, our relationships are imperfect, um, in our house there's a lot of struggle, a lot of broken ways of thinking, a lot of broken relationships, and you know, it's that stereotypical image of the Asian American family dynamic. Um, but at the end of the day, there is that fact that our family made sacrifices for us, big sacrifices. Um, and those sacrifices are the reason that we are here today, it's the reason I'm here today, and that I can live the life that I live today. And um, they took care of me, they fed me, and they gave me a home. They left behind their life in the Philippines to come to America. And the reason they did that was because of family, um, for their family back home, and also for their family that they would have here, which is me and my brother. And that's where this guilt comes from. When you think about these sacrifices that our parents made, that my parents made for me, and why I tried so hard for so long to kind of fix this broken situation. Um, it's why in every fight, after every argument, I felt bad that I showed any kind of negative emotion towards my parents. Um, it's why after being mistreated, I always tried so hard to believe that behind all of the bad, there was still love. I said, they still care about me, they still love me. Even though it came, became very, very hard to believe those words when I said them to myself. And part of growing up was realizing that I did not have to justify my family's harmful actions and behaviors. They often justify their actions themselves by saying, we can because we are family. But at the end of the day, you cannot justify a person's actions with the things they did in the past, what their title is, or what their relationship to you is. And I say to myself that I can forgive them, but I can't justify what they did to me. And again, this idea, going back to the idea of the sacrifices that our parents made, um, it's also what kind of made family feel like something very contractual growing up for me. Um, my parents gave me this, so I owe them this. Um, because they're my parents, they can say X, Y, and Z, they can do X, Y, and Z, they can treat me like X, Y, and Z. And because I'm their kid, I'm not allowed to say this to them. I'm not allowed to act like this in front of them. And I think for me, the other part of growing up was just realizing that though it felt contractual, though the images of what I thought family should be seemed like give and take, and that I owed things to the family who gave me things, um, I just had to realize that nowhere in the world does there exist a family contract that we sign by being born into this world, into a family. And yes, my parents did sacrifice a lot for me, um, and I do think about that every day, and yes, I really am thankful for that, but it does not mean that in turn I have to sacrifice myself for them. And as selfish and as American that sounds, there are other ways I can give back to my parents that do not include giving up myself, who I am, my personality, my sexuality, who I want to be, what I want to do in my future. I do not have to give those things up for, my, for them because they are my parents. I grew up thinking, that there are shoulds and should nots to family. But it took a long time for me to be at peace with the statement that not all families are going to be perfect, and that's okay. Just because this group of people that you were born into is labeled as family by society, by a dictionary, it does not mean that family should include this or this, or that it will include this or this. And that's such a simple thing, I know. Um, I sound pretty dramatic right now. But I guess I think that's the mentality that I have to carry through life in order to move on through life. Um, 
I think now, um, my relationship with my family is definitely in a better place, um, at least for now. And I think what I'd say to those of you in the audience who might relate to any piece of this talk, or any piece of my experience, um, I think the advice I would give you guys is <clears throat> don't resent them. It's okay if you can't love them, but every day be thankful for them. It's easy to fixate on all these things that happened in my past, the good and especially the bad, but to get closure and to move on, we have to learn how to acknowledge that the bad happened and look at the good that came out of it. Look at the lessons that we learned and the effects that were brought into the present because of what happened in the past. So, to the family I was given, I say thank you for shaping me into the person I am today. Thank you for pushing me to my limits and setting expectations that seemed unattainable to the point where it would break me. Because of you, I'm ambitious, I'm hardworking. I dream so big and I work so hard and I set the bar so, so high in everything I do. To the family I was given, thank you for showing me that it's not worth it to lose yourself to meet other people's expectations. It's not worth it to sacrifice and suppress parts of yourself in order to fit a standard. I think growing up in an environment where your identity is constantly being judged, constantly being analyzed, and when people are trying to shape your identity for you, it forces you to kind of look at yourself and see what's here for me, what's here for you, and what's here for them. And I think growing up in that environment is what allows me now to be comfortable with who I am. Um, and now I'm built to stand in the face of judgment and just be unapologetically me. To the family I was given, thank you for setting a mindset that every hardship is a lesson to be learned and a step towards growth. You are the reason I'm such an optimist and why so many of you see me walk around every day with the positive energy I have and a smile on my face. Because of you, I know that no matter how hard it gets, no matter how long it feels, no matter how hopeless it may feel at times, that one day we will eventually reach the end of that tunnel and the light will feel better than you can ever imagine. Just as light cannot exist without darkness, the good cannot exist without the bad. The bad is what makes the good feel so amazing and it's the bad experiences that make us thankful for the good ones. Throughout my life, I found mothers and fathers and teachers and coaches and directors. Um, they're the people who talked to me. They're the people who made sure I took care of myself and took care of me when I couldn't do that. I found brothers and sisters, and my teammates and friends at school, people I found through sports, through clubs, through classes, through being roommates, through e-boards, through Filipino cultural clubs on campus, through Asian American communities on campus. I think you guys get the deal. Um, I found older siblings and people who I look up to, people who are my role models today. Um, they guided me through school, they guided me through college, and they still continue to guide me today through life. And I found younger siblings and people who make me laugh, who annoy me, and make me smile more than I could ever, and make me feel like a big brother. <laughs> For everyone in the audience, if you take nothing else away from this spiel, um, take away these next few thoughts. Remember to be grateful for the people you have in your life. Um, remember to say I love you, and just remember how lucky you are. Because um, not all of us grow up with the people that we need in life. Um, some of us have to wait for it, some of us have to look for it. Um, and a lot of us walk around missing pieces that we need but we, will, we won't know that we're, that we're in need of them until it's right there in front of us. You don't know when you'll become someone else's missing piece. You don't know when your words are what someone needed to hear, when your actions are what someone needed to feel, or when your presence is what someone needed to be there all along. So taking that into consideration, Take care of your relationships because you will never truly know what impact you have on the people around you. Earlier, I presented the, duction, the, the dictionary definition of family. Family, spelled F-A-M-I-L-Y, 
a noun. First definition, a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. Second definition, all the descendants of a common ancestor. Now here's my definition of family. Family, spelled F-A-M-I-L-Y, a noun, and more specifically an emotion or feeling. Family supports you, family brings out the best in you, and family makes you feel like you belong. Family makes you feel safe, family makes you happy, family makes you feel good. Family is unconditional love, and family is the people you hold on tight to, and you can't imagine your life without. So I say thank you to the family I was given, and thank you to the family I found.